Tulsi Gabbard channel right here. I'm Dave, and uh, here's an ad that only takes about 47 seconds, and it it tells more truth in the 47 seconds than um, most politicians do in an entire career. While politicians cry crocodile tears over lives already lost, they make plans to sacrifice more lives on the altar of new regime change wars and the new Cold War. Now, if anybody else other than Tulsi Gabbard said politicians were crying crocodile tears over lives that were already lost, if somebody who wasn't in her position said that, it wouldn't come off very well. It would sound shrill and maybe a little tone deaf, but uh, coming from Tulsi Gabbard, we know she means business and we know she can speak to this because of her service. As commander in chief, I will honor those who give their lives in service to our nation by ending wasteful, unnecessary wars and only sending our troops on missions that are truly worthy of their great sacrifice. Okay, there it is. Um, the crocodile tears on Memorial Day speaks to this notion that you don't support the troops. So I hear uh, you're upset that our troops are going to Syria. So Dave, you don't support the troops. Um, our troops are deploying again to Afghanistan. We've got a mission there. We've got to complete our mission. So what you're saying, Dave, is you don't support the troops in Afghanistan? Well, what's the matter with you, Dave? Everybody supports the troops. God bless the troops. Everyone supports the troops. Now, of course I support the troops, you moron. <laughs> I'm speaking to an imaginary person. Um, but this notion that if I question, if I question the mission, if I say, you know what, you know what, I don't know, I don't know if this is a good thing that we're doing. I don't know if this is a, a worthy mission that we're on. I don't know if the United States should put boots on the ground in Syria. I don't know if we should be sending warships to the Middle East, because we are. And you think we know everything about all of the different exercises our uh, naval fleets are involved in? Like, you know, the, the Navy, where they're going, what they're doing? I mean, come on. This, this is... <sighs> I get frustrated because this has been going on since George W. Bush in... 2002, 2003, 2004, running up to the war with Iraq, and you know John Kerry running a very lame campaign against Bush. Uh, Kerry, by the way, is another deep state tool. He would have kept everything as it was. He would have just changed tactics or generals, people that he likes versus people that you know but but supposedly a lot of anti-war people were supporting John Kerry you know John Kerry was the guy who protested when he got back uh, from Vietnam so people thought hey maybe this guy would do something but <laughs> he didn't do anything under Obama right so why would he do anything as president the bottom line here going through and the thread that goes through all of this is we love our troops. Our troops are great, brave men and women. That's not the issue. The issue is what mission are we sending them on? You know, if your kid knows how to ride their bike really well, does it mean you send them over a cliff on their bike? This is this is the insanity that we're we're dealing with these days. And people are like, yeah, so you're not for sending your kid over the cliff? I mean, everybody's sending their kids over the cliff. Why question the cliff? The cliff is, is great. I mean, everybody's doing it. And, and you think to yourself, well, well you're not even going to question this? And most Americans aren't. 
we're self-medicated. We're illusioned by other things, whether it's a television or music or other pursuits. We're constantly uh, trying to unplug from all of this because most of us have come to the conclusion that we only have a short time to live, you know, and maybe we're just trying to make the most of our lives. But yet, peace is not a part of, you know, leaving a legacy of peace, for instance, isn't that important for most people. If you want to call it selfishness, if you want to call it arrogance, if you want to call it just being tone deaf to the reality around you, because I think that's what, I mean, Republicans are the worst on this, because I used to be a Republican. Republicans, they hear the word military or or deadly force or ground troops, they hear phrases, and it's it's almost like an aphrodisiac to them. I'm, I'm just being honest. It, in, I understand patriotism, the American flag, um, all of those things, but we've now, we've even tied in some areas, we've tied kind of this very narrow version of Christianity. We've actually entangled that with some sort of a constant military involvement in, in all things. Like you're more of a Christian if you're into military combat or something. It's it's bizarro world. Um, blessed are the peacemakers. Remember? <laughs> I read the verse. I actually used a Bible and I read the verse. But most people don't ascribe to that verse. They look to some Old Testament thing where, you know, one nation is trying to destroy another nation and because God said to destroy this nation, you know, and so they take that and they put that overlay that template onto this and it could be Iran it could be Venezuela folks we can't keep doing this we can't keep doing this Tulsi Gabbard has the guts has the wherewithal um, she's right in their faces with this and this ad here if any other like mainstream Democrat had put this out they probably would have been condemned for putting it out, number one. But see, this is what they're trying to do this with Tulsi. Uh, she's saying a lot of things, but we, we don't see her. She's We know she's over there. You know, we'd like, but you know what? Let's just ignore her and maybe she'll go away. Seriously, they're looking. I think that's their, their whole strategy with Tulsi is eventually she's just going to crash and burn. She's only at 1% or 2%, and we'll just keep reporting. Even if she hits 10% or whatever the percentage is, we're just going to keep reporting 1% or 2%. We're not going to interview anybody uh, with a cell phone. <laughs> we're not going to We're not going to interview anybody who gets their news from uh, YouTube or independent media. Nope, not going to do it. Not going to do it. So uh, this ad, again, more guts than... And it's only, again, let me, I'm just going to play it again. This is how good of an ad this is. Tulsi Gabbard, 47 seconds. While politicians cry crocodile tears over lives already lost, they make plans to sacrifice more lives on the altar of new regime change wars and the new Cold War. As commander in chief, I will honor those who give their lives in service to our nation by ending wasteful, unnecessary wars and only sending our troops on missions that are truly worthy of their great sacrifice. So Tulsi Gabbard saying here, we're not going to send anybody into harm's way unless it's worthy of their sacrifice. I mean, the wording here is fantastic. I think of the the founders, our, what is it, our fort, is it George Washington or um, I forget which founder, and I'm sure somebody will, will correct me here, but it was our, our fortune, our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. That's what I think. I mean, this is somebody who gets, by the way, she's, she's inadvertently, or maybe on purpose, she's stumbled into the, into the United States Constitution, which has been trampled on by both the left and the right now. The right is doing it. The right always says, well, we're the constitutional conservatives. <laughs> really? 
<laughs> are you getting the authorization for war? Because that's kind of a, a constitutional conservative thing. I think it was Mike Lee who finally said, no, nope, we're not going to give Trump permission to do that. Guys like Lee and Cruz and Ben Sass or whoever, occasionally they they show a little bit of uh, courage by uh, voting for their so-called um, <clears throat> constitutional principles. But um, they they don't do it all the time, and they certainly don't do it consistently. So Tulsi Gabbard attracting people who actually believe in the Constitution. Now, of course, a lot of those people don't like big government and so forth, what they perceive as big government, but um, taking the trillions of dollars that we're wasting and applying that to uh, people who actually have problems and needs here in the United States is actually a really good thing. I mean, as she said, Saudi Arabia is not America first, you know. Um, being S Saudi Arabia's B-I-T-C-H, and I think she actually said that in a tweet, uh, is not America first. So, um, good on Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, this is a once-in-a-lifetime candidate, and I would support her if she doesn't win in these primaries, and Bernie also gets somehow gypped at the end of it. Um, I would support, I would support her um, wholeheartedly for an independent bid. I really would, because she's she's just different. <laughs> she's just different. We're not going to see this too often. We may not ever see this again. Who knows? Uh, there may be glimpses in the future. You may say, oh. Uh, that person, they're a little bit like Tulsi Gabbard. Remember her? You know, I'm hoping we never have to say that. I'm hoping, you know, Tulsi is young. She's going to be around for a long time, God willing. And we all have to be ready to go wherever this movement takes us at the end of this. Because this is just the beginning. We're just getting started. Uh, and I know a lot of other YouTube-type independent personalities who are hyped up about their channels and love what they do and understand that this is a long-term fight and um, there are people coming over who probably would never have thought that they would be thinking uh, the way they're thinking now and I am one of those people so uh, anyway it's like a you know Damascus Road moment where you just say to yourself wow <laughs> what was I thinking before all right, I'm done with this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Check me out over on Patreon if you can, and uh, keep the faith.